big league sports venues, football stadiums, hockey arenas, and the like, come at a cost to the environment. They generate lots of traffic and trash and use a lot of water and electricity. So governments often require the facilities to undergo a vigorous environmental review before shovels go in the ground. That's been the case with every big league stadium and arena built in New York State the past 15 years. Yankee Stadium, City Field, and the arenas that are home to the New York Islanders and the Brooklyn Nets. Closer to home, Key Bank Center, home of the Buffalo Sabres, was also required to complete an environmental impact statement when it was built in the 1990s. And Salem Field, where the Bisons play, also had to complete an EIS when it was built in the 1980s. But Erie County is about to give the Buffalo Bills a free pass on its $1.4 billion stadium planned for Orchard Park. Why? Erie County Executive Mark Polencars won't discuss the topic. But our review of county records and interviews with other county officials indicate it's all but a foregone conclusion that the county will allow the bills to skip the full-blown environmental review. This follows the county hiring two attorneys from Phillips Lytle, who have track records of helping clients avoid lengthy environmental reviews. The whole idea is to cut out the expense that's involved of the time-consuming nature of actually doing the proper environmental impact statement. That is fairly common practice, where the, uh, the lead agency has decided beforehand what the outcome to be, um, and uh, they sort of go, go through the steps uh, in a perfunctory way. The Bills wouldn't be the first NFL team to sidestep a full environmental review. Investigative Post looked at the last half dozen football stadiums built. Half of them underwent a full review, and four of them were built to lead certifications, meaning they were built to promote sustainability. Investigative Post reported several weeks ago that the Bills have no such plans. Now my review of stadium planning documents has shown a few nods to the environment, such as the use of LED lights and low-flow toilets, but nothing approaching the steps that other NFL teams have taken as they've moved into new stadiums over the past decade. Those documents also show the new stadium will use more electricity than the current one. Neither the county nor the bills will say whether the stadium will use clean energy, such as solar, wind, or hydropower. Our goal is to get the cleanest power possible, but uh, I'd have to leave it up to the experts to say exactly what the percentages are and where they're coming from. Do you have any commitments on that from the bills? I, well, I am not going to uh, state a commitment on the bills other than something that's released in the final documents, which we're still negotiating. So I would not sit here today and make a commitment on behalf of the bills. What do the bills say? Ron Rakuya, the team's point person on the stadium, wouldn't answer questions when I approached him at a recent public hearing. Yeah, we, we've been trying to interview you for, uh, for a couple of stories. I was hoping we might be able to... Yeah, sorry, just not today. Thanks. You can, call, you can call the Bills PR department. Yeah, you should have uh, an email in your inbox for me, so please get back to me. Thanks. The county's strategy is not without risk. Skipping a full environmental review of the area's largest construction project in recent history could be susceptible to a legal challenge. That's what allows me to bring my lawsuits and challenge something under a seeker uh, issue. The, uh, the easiest case for me to win is when they don't do an environmental impact statement. The county still has a chance to order a full environmental review for the project. The county legislature is expected to make that decision sometime next month. For Channel 2 News, I'm J. Dale Shoemaker with Investigative Post.